Welcome to this exclusive interview and I am Namo Abdullah. As we speak, Egypt is in turmoil. Hundreds of thousands of people are on the streets in Cairo and other cities and calling on their autocratic leader and government to step down. What does this mean to the Middle East and the, and the world? What are the international impacts of Egypt revolution? Well, to discuss this issue, I am joined by Nasreen Barwari, a prominent Kurdish politician in Erbil. She was the first woman minister in Iraq's post-Saddam Hussein government. She's also given lectures in prominent American universities such as Harvard and Georgetown. Ms. Barwari, I want to start off with a question. What makes millions of Egyptians come onto the streets in Cairo and other cities and call on their autocratic president Husni Mubarak, who has been in power for 30 years? to step down. Same reason why the people of Iraq overthrow dictatorship. Uh, uh, definitely there is no future for dictatorship. Uh, after 30 years, people are fed up and uh, they saw an opportunity. And this was going to happen anyway because the wave of democracy is, is not going to be stopped. The uh, people now are much more aware, much more connected, and, and ambitious and, and the youth is leading this movement. 60% of the Middle East population are youth and those youth are not going to accept uh, what their fathers accepted. So that was going to happen any day and uh, except the speed of it happening is really uh, enlightening. I mean and, and it's really promising. American prominent scholar Samuel Huntington says Islam is incompatible with democracy. He says countries where Islam is the dominant religion cannot boost democracy. Don't you see Ms. Barwari a blow being dealt at Huntington's theory as we see hundreds of thousands of people are calling for democracy in the Arab world? There is a lot of voices that spoke against that theory um, and, and many of them are foreigners, not Islamic. And, and even before the current wave of democratization in, in the Arab world, uh, even when Huntington came up with this theory, at that moment there, there was a lot of contradiction because you have big Islamic nations like Indonesia, Malaysia, and these are bigger than any Islamic country in the, in the Middle East. They were democratic. Um, you have many uh, successful democratic stories within Islamic countries. And you have dictatorship in other religions too. So Huntington was right there had some uh, issues. We, we have issues with his uh, theory and uh, I think the current wave is, is proving. There are is this a fourth wave of democratization? Definitely we're having a fourth wave. Yeah. I, I was teaching that in my class in George Washington about the fourth wave of democracy. Yeah. Will 2011 be the year of the collapse of the status quo in the Middle East? Well, it's already encouraging many people to, to do, and it's already pushing a lot of those leaders to rethink their future. Uh, just today, this morning, we heard the Yemeni president is saying he's not seeking re-election, and he's not going to let his son also. So definitely there is an effect. There is a, a message, a new message from the mass to the leaders, and leaders are rethinking their messages. Some of them are going to be smart and just move peacefully. And I think that's what's happening in Egypt. Within two days, look at the message how it changed by the President Hasni Mubarak. He changed his messages and his demands. Now, he, yesterday night, he's only saying, I will only stay for a few months to allow the peaceful transfer. Two days before, he was saying this is uh, violence, this is interference, and that should stop. So it's already affecting, and I think it's a good thing for their countries. I just hope it can happen with less violence, and I hope that those nations can really sit and, and allow for their democracy to happen from below. Well, I think Yemen is blowing. There is a lot of countries around Iraq that needs to happen. Um, Syria is a country that needs to also go through changes. Uh, you have Gulf countries that also have some challenges of democracy and have some dissent voices. And um, Jordan is going through uh, also a, a regime change, uh, I mean, government change. Um, probably Algeria. 
and uh, Sudan is definitely going through a very good change through peaceful uh, mean of referendum with the separation of the south. Uh, what will happen in the north is also something to be seen. Nasrin Barwari, former Iraqi Kurdish minister, thank you so much for your comments. Dear viewers, if you had any comments or suggestions, please send them to English at For now, bye-bye.